And we are back. My brother finally stated that he's not that he's done playing the drums, so we may continue. Seriously, though, first she was talking about herself, then about her kid, then about her childhood, and then she started talking about growing up on a farm. Somehow, she ended up going on about cows having babies and how messy it all is. I don't even know. What, you're not interested in that stuff? You know, gross, gross, gross! She wrinkles up her face as she says it. I giggle, but then turn serious real fast. Okay, but listen, because it's dark, the group probably isn't going to stop to look at the mummy cave ruins for very long. So we'll have to wait until we can sneak away again, and then go over there ourselves. <laughs> How far away are they? No idea. I can't see from here. Just follow my lead again. Got it! We've been at the very back of the group the entire time. The people right in front of us are as much, are as much less interested the people in front of us uh, are much less interested than us. Uh, the, I'm having a brain aneurysm. The people right in front of us are, are much less interested in us than Linda was. So I don't think anyone will notice if we go missing. When we reach a railing, uh, the guide stops to point out the ruins. Uh, they've crossed a small valley a couple hundred yards away. And in, the, in the darkness, it's almost impossible to see them. They're just a dark smudge against the even darker backdrop of the mountain. Mina and I are a few yards away from the group to I pretend to inspect something on a rock, uh, though there's nothing there. As the short speech ends and the guide uh, starts to lead everyone on again, I dart behind a rock and crouch, Mina falls quickly. I can see her start to say something, but I cut my hand over her mouth before she can get a word out, silently I shake my head. Mina nods twice so I uncover her face. In my head, I count to 60. Once a minute has passed, I peel away from the rocks and start then stand back up. You should be safe now. And his face lights up as she claps her hands. I notice she's taken uh, out the journal page out of the hiding, with the hiding spot again. That was so cool! It was like something out of a video game where you just sneak away right in front of everyone! I guess so. But we still can't be noisy. There are no flashlights either. Oops. Uh... I guess so. But we still can't be noisy. They're not going to be that far away. No flashlights either. Let's close up. I can see your face. Uh, follow that. Don't worry. I'll be right beside you. Are we just going to hop the fence and walk over there? Unless you have any better ideas. What if they catch us? Then they'll throw us out. We're not going to get arrested for trespassing or anything, are we? Nah, that'd be too much trouble for them. I say that, although I don't actually know. Okay. There's certainty your voice is obvious. I grab the paper from her hand and stuff into my pocket. Let's go. The longer we wait, the more likely it is that they'll notice us missing. I stroll over to the metal railing, uh, hoping, hoping that I sound more confident than I am. Honestly, this is pretty risky, and more than a little stupid, but it's so exciting. I duck down and underneath the rail, after a moment Marina does the same. We're officially out of bounds. Across the small field, uh, I can still just barely make out the shape of the ruins. We sit close to the mountain of the little cave, or the large cave that runs through the mountain like a scar. Okay, come on. There's an incline, but it's not too bad. Next to me, Marina spreads her arms out for balance, but I'm confident enough uh, to not need it. Crossing over the ruins themselves uh, will be the risky part. There's no cover, and anyone who happens to look over will see us. We just have to hope that Churgrip has moved somewhere else without laying a say on us. Okay, hurry. I grab Marina's hand and start to run. She struggles to keep up, so I slow down a bit. It takes maybe two minutes uh, from one end to the other. We reach the far wall. Marina's breath is strained. Don't do much running, do you? Not it. Oh. Every word is punctuated with pant. I'm winded too, but faking my lungs, but faking my lungs to not show it. I have to look strong for Marina. <laughs> oh. oh, it's, it's so cute. God damn it. Oh, my heart. Ready for the fun part? Is it actually fun? Not yet. We've still got to get up there. 
I point to the left of the cave. I get 50 feet or so up on, up on this. When his face goes pale, she stares the sheer rock wall in front of us. We're not gonna have to climb that, are we? How else? Wait for a second for the shock to, to hit her face before I laugh and shake my head. Just kidding. Come over here. A short distance away is a slope. Uh, somewhat steep, but not too long. It leads up into the part of the cave close to the ruins. We actually do have to go up this one. Her face is still looking doubtful. I don't know if I can get up that. Sure you can. It's easy. Look! I hike up a couple steps. Dirt and bits of gravel tumble down past my feet, but it's mostly stable. It's almost all dirt. If it was loose rock, we'd be in trouble. So I look like uncertain. Rina takes a step, takes a, takes a careful step up behind me, then another. She slides back down a little with each step. Try to spread out your weight a little more evenly. You don't want to lose your balance and fall over. <laughs> but doing what I say, she's able to reach for us, Anna. Good job. Now just do that like 50 more times. Rina groans, but I've already started. Glance back behind me, she's trailing me only a couple steps back. For all her worrying, she's doing okay. I'm just about to compliment her when I feel the earth shift beneath me and my foot slides loose. With a yelp, I lose my balance, arms flailing as I try not to fall. Then faster, uh, then faster than I can process, Mia's arms shoot out and grabs my sleeve. She tugs me back up, right? Are you okay? Oh my god, is your ankle alright? It's not broken, is it? <laughs> Panic is nearly painted across her face. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. The only thing injured is my pride. Oh, these are the cutest. <laughs> oh, these are the cutest lesbians. Oh my god, my heart. I can't, I can't take it. It's so cute. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, thanks. Good save. We climb up the rest of the way together, but slowly. At the top, both of us stretch and catch our breath. That wasn't so bad, was it? Besides the part where you almost died, maybe. <sighs> I didn't almost die. Besides, that's what I have my sidekick for. <laughs> she gives me a playful shove. Hey, I told you, I'm not the sidekick here. Uh-huh. You'll still have to earn the title of captain. Or commander. Whatever it is. And you can do that by finding this thing before I do. Now that we're actually up the ruins themselves, it's more clear just how tough it's going to be. The cave stretches a long way, like a deep, like a deep scar in the moon. Delicate clay buildings, some barely as tall as we are, are arranged throughout. They say this was a village, but it's hard to imagine anyone living here. Everything is so cramped and small. Where do you think we should start? Hard to say. It won't be anywhere obvious. Remember, people have been studying this place for decades. What if someone already found it? Like, a long time ago. I shrugged, but that's probably, impo that's probably impossible to see. The sun has gone down entirely, leaving us in the shadow of darkness. I wonder why Mar Marina... I wonder why Marina uh, doesn't seem bothered by this at all. If they did, then I haven't heard anything about it. We've just gotta start looking. Try to be careful, though. I feel bad being here. Maybe this was a bad idea. Be super careful, then. And watch for spiders! I flick on the spare flashlight and pass it to her. Just in time to see a look of disgust at the mention of spiders. We split up, staying close to each other, but not overlapping where we look. I get down on my hands and knees, shining light at every corner and tranny any that I can. I worry that our lights may be visible for a distance, even though we're not, they aren't very powerful. The only alternative would be sneaking over in broad daylight, uh, we'd be much more likely to be caught then. Not finding anything except dirt, I brush my fingers along the pretty bricks uh, in hopes of finding a loose stone or secret compartment, but there's nothing like that. Nearby, Marina does the same thing. She's hitching up her dress, uh, so it doesn't drag on the ground, and I force myself to look away rather than stare. She offers quite a view there. After a minute, Marina giggles, I'm not sure why. I haven't spoken at all, uh, but I don't want her because I don't want her voices to echo in the cave and give us away. I silent but silently searching get to be as fast, so I decided to try whispering. What's so funny? I don't know. 
know. Everything, I guess? I was just thinking how weird this is. Like, it's just so random, you know? All right, Aristotle. <laughs> Who's that? Never mind. <laughs> oh, baby. Oh, but yeah, it is kind of crazy. You say in the building I was scaring was a lost cause, I moved to the next one. I know it's probably not a big deal for you since you do this stuff all the time, but this is honestly the most fun I've ever had, I think. Destroying ancient Native American landmarks? I'm being careful, super careful, but just in general, being out here on the road. I thought maybe I was making a mistake when I left, but not anymore. I'm glad. And I am. I really am. I guess it worked out well for both of us. I can't see her from here, but I know she's smiling. She that then she giggles again. Oh, Amber. You're a big ol' softie after all, aren't you? I am not. I take it back. I should have left you on the side of the road. This time we both laugh. After that, uh, after that, we lapse back into near silence, just as Endo is crawling around or occasional moving to another building to search. Soon the happy atmosphere starts to dissolve as we start getting frustrated. Or at least I do. It takes maybe 20 minutes before we've looked over all the buildings. There aren't too many, and combing over them isn't that hard. But we don't find anything. Not even a clue or a hint where this, uh, that we're in the right spot. Sighing through my nose, I start double-checking some of the larger homes. All the crawling and bending is starting to take a toll on me. When I straighten up, my back is sore and sweat press my hair, presses my hair to my forehead. We should have brought some bottles of water with us. I lean against a rock and massage my shoulders. Mina finishes up a building, uh, then joins me. She's biting my lip. She's biting her lip, frowning a little. Any luck? Nope, nothing. You? Uh-uh. We both pause, silent. So... That's it, right? Like we've checked all the buildings? Can't be. We must have missed something. I'm going to try checking out the cave itself. She just stands there. Watches as I head over to the far side. I shave my flashlight up and down and up again, examining every inch of the rock. There's got to be a crevice where the gold is stashed. Or, something, or some other hiding place. There has to be. But none of the cracks are wide enough or deep enough or something like that. A few minutes later, I pass by Marina, uh, still in the same place. I check her face as I go. Her brows are furrowed and she looks worried. I keep hunting. Images of Mariah triumphantly holding the gold, gold spur me on. Just the thought of her smug grin turns me off. When I reach the other end of the cave, I double back and check it again. And again. Finally, Marina pulls away from the wall. Uh, I hear it, but I don't see it. Amber, come on. There's no way. Her voice is like a knife in my heart. It hurts because I know she's right. I sigh and flick off my flashlight. Sat in there, I look at the invisible ground, and I have to admit the truth to myself. It's not here. There's no treasure to be found in the mummy's cave ruins. Oh, I've got an achievement. <clears throat> uh, either we got it wrong, or someone beat us to it. Whichever the answer is, there's nothing else in here that it could be. I make my way back to Marina, slowly. I can feel stinging tears of frustration beginning to well in my eyes, which surprises me. I'm sure Mariah would be laughing at me uh, if she were here right now. Abruptly, I stop walking towards her and spit around. I don't want Marina to see. There's a sound of, cr there's a sound of crunching dirt as she walks over. Amber? There's no worry in her voice. There's worry in her voice. I shake my head. I don't know if she can see. She lays, uh, she lays her hand on my shoulder, and two tears manage to dip out of my eyes. I shake my head again. Amber, Amber, it's okay. No, I'm sorry. I screwed up. I was wrong. There's nothing here. I know there isn't. Seriously, that's okay. I sob, not even knowing why. Damn it! Damn it! Get a grip, Amber. I rush my eyes shut before the water watch really start. It burns, but I manage to hold back. Taking deep breaths to get myself under control. I sink down to lean against the wall of the cave. Marina does the same. Oh, it's so cute. 
<laughs> oh, half the stream is just me freaking out how adorable this game is. My clothes are dusty for being on the ground so much. You're gonna poke me on the side. You okay? I draw a ratty breath. Yeah, I'm fine. Sorry. I don't know what that was about. I just got super frustrated. Yeah, I could tell. Can it? I flick her gently on the knee. But, uh, that was kind of embarrassing. No, it's okay, really. I cry all the time at home. Don't worry. It's just... It's like losing. Not finding the treasure, I mean. So I'm mad for wasting all our time on this. Aren't you? No, why would I be? She's in a genuinely surprised. Because now we're behind on the next one, too. What if someone beats us to all the rest of them? Now you sound like me. Oh, God. Is there a cure? Meanie. But really, I had fun, so I don't think it was a waste of time. Even if we're not, like, super rich now, I'm glad we came here. Once again, I didn't even have to look to know she was smiling. She's always smiling after all. It's one of the cure things about her, and there are a lot of those. <laughs> but I'm afraid to look up and meet her eyes. Afraid because of what I've, of what's been starting to feel lately, and how I've been thinking of her. It's stupid to get bothered by this now, I know. We've been together all day. But right now, when I'm already being all over emotional, I feel like it's a bad idea. Amber? And then by reflex, I do it anyway. I look over and I was right, my heart flutters a little. The smile I was anticipating has been replaced by, uh, by yet another look of concern. Yeah, you're right. I guess it wasn't so bad. She brightens up immediately. For real? Mm-hmm. I'm good now. Still, sorry for freaking out there for a sec. It's okay. Don't feel bad. Groaning, I stand up. I'm definitely gonna be sore tomorrow. <laughs> oh, I can't take it. The kids are so cute. Oh, this makes me so unbelievably happy. You guys have no idea. Half this stream is just gonna be the fucking uh, fangirling over these adorable, disaster lesbians. Oh, I love them so much. We should get out of here, though. The longer we spend, the more likely we are to get caught. It's been probably four or five minutes or so since we ditched the tour group. Hopefully, they didn't get uh, search and rescue out for out looking for us. Offer my hand to Marina. Uh, who's still sitting on the ground. She takes it and I haul her to her feet. After dressing herself off, we both walk, and, uh, walk to the edge of the cliff. It's impossible to see anything. Even the trail across the way is invisible uh, from here. Watch your step going down the hill. Yeah, we don't want anyone to almost die again. Going down the hill is easier than going up. Well, we, still should be, should, we still have to be careful. Uh, we make it to the bottom without incident. We don't risk the flashlight until we cross back over the fence on the trail. Now that we're not out of bounds, doesn't appear as people. It doesn't matter if people see us. Where do we go now? Hmm. I think about it for a moment. There's not much point in catching up with the tour again. Safe is probably ended by now. Still, if they didn't notice we disappeared, uh, still if they did notice we disappeared, it could be bad for us to just leave the park. The last thing I want is to see our faces on missing person posters the next time we see it stop at a gas station. There's about a 45 minute leaving this. Not long ago if we try and find them. We'll just go back to the parking lot and get out of here. If anyone asks, we can just say we left early. Thank God. I was hoping you'd say that. How come? I'm so tired. Same. My back's gonna hurt for a year. At least you have the comfy bed. Hey, you could always... <gasps> Uh, grab some more pillows from the closet if you need. <laughs> oh, she was so close. Oh my god. There are more? Oh yeah. Gramps liked to have a zillion pillows when he slept. Oh. She said it like down. Oops. Uh, maybe I should have made. Maybe I shouldn't have made that connection there. Don't worry. They weren't like his special pillows or anything. You can use them. All right. Damn, she's really starting to worry when I mention it. Guess it's, guess there's good reason for that. But right now, though the thought of familiar, though, though the, damn. But right now, uh, though the thought of uh, is a familiar uh, jab of sadness. I'm not about to break down. I'm doing okay for now.
require the rest that we down the trail so uh, without having to stick to the slow pace of a tour grade of a graded tour we're actually it's actually like a clock God, i need to improve my ability of reading shit out loud uh, because I want to do more visual novels after this. But if I have an aneurysm every two sentences, it's not going to be more enjoyable to watch. To be fair, I have a feeling it's not already not enjoyable to watch, since everyone immediately dipped five minutes into the stream. Uh, oh well. <laughs> if nothing else, this is getting me to finally fucking pick up this game. <clears throat> there aren't any other hackers out, which surprises me. It's dark, but not that late. As we reached the parking lot, it seems like we had perfect timing. Or maybe perfectly awful. Uh, splitting out of a trailhead uh, on the other side is the tour group that we that we were briefly part of. I recognize the tour gate as well. Oh, there you girls are! Linda. She came from my blind spot before we had time to hide. I'd even try to force a smile if they turned to face her. She strolled up to us, Daniel still asleep. Howard, whoever is nowhere to be seen. Uh, though maybe he's in their car. I was hoping to see y'all before you left. Yeah, we were pretty tired, so we came back early. Oh, I'll bet you are. She winks at me, like she's in on the joke. Problem is, I don't know what the joke's supposed to be. Uh, what do you mean? Don't think I didn't notice you two running off now. Figured you were, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. She laughs and shakes her head. I think that's good, though. Reminds me of me and my Howard when we were younger. <laughs> we used to sneak off every chance we got, if you know what I mean. Everyone seems to know these two were just super gay for each other. Come on. Uh, it's so good. It's so cute. I face starts to turn red as I realize what she's thinking. Marina, uh, Marina's probably tomato colored, though I don't look. I don't turn to look. We weren't. Um, I mean, we're not. No need to be embarrassed or anything like that. And besides, at least you won't get pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> she laughs heartedly. Ah, uh, the baby on the chest bouncing with emotion. <laughs> Sorry though, I'm getting to be a bit too nosy for my own good. Y'all girls be safe out there. It was nice to get to know you. She grabs my hand uh, from my side and pumps in a vigorous handshake. Uh, then does the same for Marina. Neither of us react, still dumbfounded. Then she heads off towards the sea of cars. More of a puddle now, uh, since most of them have already left. I turn to Marina. Uh, as expected, her face is scarlet. Um, wow. Right? That poor baby. And that poor husband. <laughs> I didn't think people like that were real. Like, they only existed in books and movies and stuff. They say the desert does weird things to your head. Or maybe Wisconsin does. <laughs> <laughs> I struck and start walking back to the RV. I'm glad the marina doesn't push the topic of Linda's misconception. I unlock the door and let Marina in first. Uh, we're one of the last ones here. Before I pull the door shut, I take a final look around Canyon de, che, de Chile. De Chile? De Chile. Canyon. Before I pull the door shut, I take a final look around Canyon de Chile, or what little, like a little of it I can see. It may have been a bust, but like Marina said, it wasn't a total waste of time. And chapter 3 is done! Ugh, I love this. Mm. It's so cute, it's so good. I'm very happy. 10 out of 10. I love it. Oh, baby. I save the RV once again. I crash down into the driver's seat and kick my feet up on the dash. It's a relief to sit on something soft. Like a satellite, Marina hovers around me expectantly. So that was a failure, obviously. Do you think it might be in a different part of the canyon? Maybe, but we're not going to find out. We could spend days out here and not find anything. Most likely, someone else found it before us. Maybe even before this whole treasure hunt thing started. She stares at the ground, then perks back up. That's okay, though. All we can do is move on. <laughs> we change the glove compartment. She brings out the journal and has it today. Come on! Show me why the human travel guide is the best. I look at her for a moment, then with a smile, gently take it from her. Sure thing. But 
but that's the first and only time you're ever gonna call me that, okay? Okay. I flip around the journal and skim the pages. I skipped one of the I skipped one of the entries last time because it looked like a jumbled puzzle. Uh, but we're going to find the rest of the treasure. Then we need to tackle this one head on. But I was bracing myself for the confusion. I find the entry and groan. I write <coughs> my divine, my old prospect, my old man voice. I write to you today, not from dear Lamassi, le, not not from my dear Lamassi winged landmark, but destination of an unforeseen danger. During my journey eastbound, I encountered a split within the dusted road. I have entered many, I have heard from many of these in my travels, but this one triggered a thought that maybe, perhaps, I have been too obvious with my hiding. Let us assume my jealous peer wanted to track me. Paranoid or paranoia or not, as they so desire, they could easily could. My steed's pred, my steed's prints are setting within sand, but I have not disguised my livelihood. In fact, one may call these, one may call these a trail. If one were to follow this trail, we may even have it upon my bounty. The likelihood is of this is very slim, however. I have always considered myself to be a man who only takes calculated risks. It is why I am shocked that, in, that this thought has he, this thought has never crossed my mind before. Surely an intelligent, rugged, and worldly individual such as myself would have come to this conclusion by now. Or perhaps I am not. I am none of these things. Nonetheless, I marked the spot and took the path. I felt was less travelled. After I recovered enough distance, I found a satisfactory location. Acres of identically arched rock. Acres of identi identically arched stone were spread across this area. The more I travelled, the more there were. On occasion, I had seen some, but never so, never so close together, nor so plentiful. Though, I do worry one could narrow down the gold as he had the well. Alas, the remnants of my, owl reappeared, of my illness reappeared, forcing me to find a resting site. Eventually, I settled between two stones, unlike the arched one. Uh, I often feared they would fall apart and collapse on me, but their balance seemed steady and they provided shade and, se and, seren and scenery. Yeah, shade and scenery. So once again, I am resting and determined. While this detour took precious time away from me, I have very much felt its worth to security provides, even if it was unnecessary. P.S. This morning I looked at my pouch. It would appear as if I have it. I would appear as if I had enough gold for one last burial. The Massey's landmark uh, seems more than proper for this. Oh no. Oh no? Does that mean you don't know where it's at? The opposite. I know exactly where it's at. Then what's the problem? I lean back in the chair and look at the ceiling. It's in Arches National Park. Cool, then let's go! I ignore her and keep looking at the ceiling. Arches has over 2,000 natural stone arches. The miner said he hid it between two stones. She blinks. I sigh. An arch is a rock formation that curves in the air. Think of it as an upside down U. Finally, she gets the message. Her face morphs into a blank canvas as she stares at the windshield. Oh no. Yeah. If we want to find this thing, then we need to look between every single arch and arches. After a moment of petrified silence, Marina takes back the journal and returns it to its proper place in the girl's apartment. With a shaky smile, Marina looks back at me and tries blowing it off. Uh, arches National Park, huh? It's somewhere in Moab, right? You ever been? With a shaky grin of my own, I respond, totally ignoring the impossible feat ahead of us. Yeah, I went to Moab a long time ago. Arches is really famous. Like, world famous. We're both sweating. Staring at the long road ahead of us, we try our best to make casual conversation. It's like a game of check-in. Who's gonna break first? I've always wanted to go. Where have you vacationed to before? Honestly, nowhere. Not out of the state, at least. For real? Not even to visit family? Nuh-uh. My grandparents live in New Mexico, too. I think only my big brother has been outside of the state. You got any other siblings? Or is it just you two? She shakes her head. There's 
nine of us. I've got two younger brothers, three older brothers, an older sister, and two little sisters. Jesus. I whistle. Damn, that's a big ass Christmas card. <laughs> right? At some point it's just like, aren't you ever gonna stop? I'm almost out of fingers to count on. Tripling, I stand up and watch the back. Mina falls behind me. What about you? Do you have any siblings? Nah, just me. Otherwise, they'd probably be riding around this old thing with us. As I say that, I collapsed down onto my bed, sprawling out. Sitting up front felt good, but this is heavenly. The bed sinks a little as she takes a seat on its edge. I can't really imagine having a single brother or sister. Definitely not eight of them. But I guess they don't all live at home. Actually... You're kidding. Only one of my brothers has moved out. It's the worst. Like, you have to make a reservation to take a shower. No wonder you ran away. Pretty much. As soon as I finished school, I was just like, okay, time to get out of here. How long ago was that? Just a couple months. Two-ish. What'd you major in? Huh? Like, what'd you get your degree in? Oh, um, not college. High school. I just finished high school. Huh. Just my elbows. I propped myself up. What? Uh, how old are you? Putting her hands on her hips, Mina puffs her cheek. Puffs out her cheeks and looks offended. I'll have you know, it's very rude to ask a lady her age. She deflates. But I'm 18. Why? Oh, thank God. <laughs> Girl, come on. Let us all fall back again. I was afraid you were going to be underage and that I'd get arrested for kidnapping or something. <laughs> no way. And besides, I told you my parents were fine with it. Well, accepted it. What about you? How old are you? Just a year older. Wait, you're only 19? Now it's her turn to be shocked. How old did you think I was? Rina bursts burst out laughing. It's actually a little bit embarrassing. I look the way blowing my hair away from my face. Just kidding, just kidding. I figured you were like my age or a bit older. Two years at the most. I don't look at her, staring at the wall. Oh, come on, don't be mad. I was just playing. All of a sudden, she sounds seriously... All of a sudden, she sounds seriously regretful. I want to mess with her, but the puppy dog, like, uh, the puppy dog look she gives me over, over her shoulder is too hard to resist. Sorry, what? <laughs> my hearing must be getting bad at my old age. <laughs> she throws a pillow at me from the bedside and I deflect it with my arm. <laughs> Good save, Granny. Now she leans back, staring up at the ceiling. Her hair, her hair is spread across my leg. I don't move it. Then I realize that all the worry and nervousness we had about Arches is gone. Somewhere along the line, uh, we forgot about it. Huh. I don't know when uh, we reached the point in our relationship where we could be comfortable being this close to each other. But I'm glad we have. Maybe, just maybe, I'm enjoying the closeness a little too much. It's been a long time since I dated someone. Graham's health uh, made having a girlfriend possible. It wasn't time for anything. Hell, I hardly had time for myself, not that I cared. I'd do it all over again. Well, hey, I mean... What's my Tamagotchi shouting about? Oh, well, hey, at least he's not homophobic. Still, so, it's nice. Having someone to talk to. Uh, so it's not just me and my thoughts. Just as I'm about to settle into the mood, she sits up and stretches. <sighs> Pretty sleepy. Are you going to bed soon? Nah, I took a nap earlier, so I'm good. It's only a few hours to Moab, so I'll drive us there tonight. Moab, huh? Well, yeah. Something wrong? No, I was just kind of wondering. She trails off. Wondering... Um, how far away is the Grand Canyon? Yes! From here? I don't know, three or four hours? But it's in the total opposite direction that we're going. Come on. I think I'll retrieve her girl to see the Grand Canyon. Oh, okay. The, cre 
The crestfallen look in her face should be illegal. Sorry, I should have looked at the map before I asked. Smiling, she turns and heads for bed. That's coming clinging to her like perfume. Night, Amber. Laying against my pillows, I watch as she slowly trots off the bed. To the back. Come on now. It's not- I'm not that heartless. Wait a sec. She freezes mid-step. I guess since I was gonna drive all night anyway, we can make a detour. Yeah. A pretty big detour too. So don't blame me if all the treasure is gone by the time we're done. She turns around, hope spraying into her face now. But I guess it's like a requirement that you see the Grand Canyon when you're sightseeing in Arizona. So that's what we'll do. You've got a lot of vacations to make up for. All of the tiredness and disappointment vanishes in an instant, like a bird taking flight. She hurries back over to where I was just standing. A trademark, a trademark marina, a trademark marina uh, crash tackle hug knocks me onto my butt and bed again. Uh, I pat her on the back a couple times before she rises. Have I ever told you you're the best? Probably, but don't you forget it. I <laughs> couldn't if I tried. Poof. I poke her in the belly as I make my as I make my way up to the front again. Grab me an energy drink from the fridge, will ya? Uh, when she sits down in the passenger seat, uh, she only has two cans of the energy drink. Thought you were going to bed. No way! I'm too excited now! I'll keep you company on the drive. Plus, it's only like 8 o'clock, isn't it? Beats me. Sounds right. Pop up on the tap of my drink. Take a long dra draft? Draft? No draft. Hold the fuck up, I'm gonna look this up. Draft. Yeah, it's pronounced draft. <clears throat> I pop open the tab of my drink and take a long draft. It tastes awful, but it wakes me up a little. Nothing, but it wakes me up like nothing else. I guess the markers uh, cut out of sweeteners. I guess the makers cut out sweeteners and nice flavors for more stimulants. To drink it faster, I hold my breath to hide the taste and chug. Gasping, I crumple the empty can, toss it into the trash bag. Mira, on the other hand, sips it daintily, wincing each time. Ugh, people seriously drink this stuff? Somehow. It works, though. It's pretty much the strongest stuff you can get without a prescription. After taking another sip, Mina wrenches and sticks her tongue out. She reminds me of a cat with fur stuck on its tongue. She says the can and the cup holder beside me. Do you want mine? I can't drink this. I'd have a heart attack if I drank too. Just leave it and I'll drink it tomorrow. Because the only way to improve an awful energy drink is to let it get warm and flat. I start the RV. Mina says something, but it's soft enough that I can't hear it over the engine revving. What was that? Old lady hearing failing on me again. <laughs> Smiling, she shakes her head. I was just saying thanks again. Don't thank me yet. I could fall asleep at the wheel and kill us both. <laughs> at least I die happy. <laughs> I just fucking can't with this girl, oh my god. No, though, uh, not just that. For taking me with you and doing the treasure hunt and everything. You must be super tired. You're saying all sorts of weird stuff now. I mean it. I know it's kind of random. I'm just really happy I met you. After a moment of blushing, I laugh a little under my breath. Yeah, me too. I prevent any more Shizu conversation by carefully going out uh, of the parking lot and backing into the exit road. I definitely, I'm definitely glad that Maria's enjoying herself. I'm having fun too. Talking about that sort of thing, it makes me feel all, squirm all squirmy inside. Like I don't match up to what Marina thinks of me. Pushing those faults out of my head, I focus on the road. I have to keep our eyes peeled for animals out here. There are a lot of stray dogs in this part of the state. Dozens of deer and antelope too. Uh, just waiting to race, just waiting to race cars. The road's devoid of other vehicles though. And since I know the exit to take, more or less, we should just, we should make pretty good time. Once we get back onto the highway, uh, Marina uh, hoists the bucket of cat. Tapes onto her lap. What do you want to listen to? Hmm. I glance between the road and the bend, scanning both. I sell a lot of an album that I haven't heard had the heart to listen to in a while. 
Uh, but it feels like tonight is the right time. I'll touch out the tape and slide it into the player. This of course starts off by watch Moon's face for a reaction. I wonder the same sentimental value to her. I know. But it's an emotional album in general. Also dynamics uh, to the music and simple but heartfelt songs. Gramps used to try uh, to play along, uh, but he said he couldn't quite capture the feeling himself. As I'd hoped, Maroon is quiet, which means she's listening. Uh, her cheek is pressed up against the window again. Her reflection barely visible, looking wistfully. Good. For the second time today, a growing pressure starts in my eyes. I paw at them, as the motion catches Marina's attention. You sure you're not too tired? Oh yeah, eyes are just a little itchy. Damn it. My voice shakes as I speak, but, she, uh, but if she notices, she doesn't say anything. This album was another one of Graham's favorites, and there's a reason. I haven't listened to it since he passed. Turning it on may have been a mistake. Uh, we may yet go off the road if I end up crying, or may just die of embarrassment. I sniffle a couple of times to keep myself under control. Damn allergies. I don't even know if she heard me. I can attempt to turn off start playing something else, but I want Marina to hear it. It won't mean anything special to her, I'm sure. Uh, I want to see what she thinks, to see if maybe Gramps and I were crazy, or if there was more, uh, or if there was more to the music and the man playing it. Uh, he was a guitarist and a songwriter uh, who just went by the name of June. Died a few years ago. Fitting back the nostalgia and bubbling feelings of how much I miss Gramps is hard. I'm able to hold on though and keep from breaking down. Try five minutes later, when the tape ends. Marina hits the play button again to start it over. I'd say it was worth it. I'd have played for hours, long after Marina's fallen asleep beside me. <laughs> What's this? Chapter 5? Question mark? I have no idea. Uh, but I'm going to save real quick. I will cry if I lose this, if I lose my progress. Okay, yeah, that. My everything aches. It takes me a long, lazy minute to remember why I'm setting up forehead plaster to the steering wheel rather than my bed. I drove all through the night to get us to the Grand Canyon, arriving at the South Rim right around the time I couldn't keep my eyes open any longer. We're in the campsite, apparently, but I don't remember anything past uh, reaching the park's edge and paying the entry fee. I probably shouldn't have been driving, but we made it here all right. A sour taste prevents my uh, a sour taste uh, pervades my mouth, courtesy of the empty energy drink at my side. I groan as I clamber up and head to the head to go brush my teeth. When I exit the bathroom, Marina's waiting at the front, all dressed and ready to go. Good morning. Morning. I was not too sleepy to match her enthusiasm. Undeterred, she comes forward and presses a mug into my hands. I made you some coffee! But it was a couple of hours ago, so it's kind of cold now. Thanks. It's also brewed too weak, but I don't tell her that. I drain my cup in seconds and pour myself another. Uh, that's also finished in a couple of gulp and a couple of long gulp gulps. You really like coffee, huh? I guess. I think I'm just addicted. You don't even put any cream or sugar in it, right? Nope. I always drink it black. She wrinkles her nose in disgust. I can't stand the taste. I noticed. Have you gone and looked around yet? There are dozens, if not hundreds, of people milling around. And that's just what I can see from here. Most likely treasure hunters. Look around? Without you? Yeah. It's what? Noon? Almost, but I didn't want to leave without you. <laughs> Precious. That's sweet of her. What if I got lost? You're like my map. Maybe not. Besides, it's boring to go look around by myself. You think? I used to do it lots before we met up. It was nice to be alone and think. Her face falls. Seconds later, I realize my mistake and mentally kick myself. Not to say I don't like having you around. I just meant it's not so bad being on your own for a little bit. She ponders for a moment. Well, I don't like 
like being alone. It's more thrown and makes me think she's upset. Then it melts away and, uh, and is replaced with a trademark smile. Something about how the sunlight frames her face right then makes her heart skip a beat. I want to admire her for longer, but I think my face gives it away. Soon she shifts, uh, asking with her eyes. Uh, something wrong? I shake my head to clear it. Nah, sorry. Just zoned out for a second. Let me finish this coffee, and then we can go. Okay. I don't know how you can be up and at him just like that. Usually, it takes me hours to wake up. I know. I do a lot of waiting for you. <laughs> Mina stomps over to play he to play heavy on the shoulder. Meanie, I do my best for you. Yeah, yeah. There aren't enough hours in the day for you to sleep as much as you want. What? Are you saying I don't need my beauty sleep? She's just kidding, but I freeze. She is joking, right? Amber? The jaunty tone in her voice is gone. Yeah. I croak out a response. Zone out again? Something like that. Even I'm surprised by how off guard that caught me. It was just a simple joke, but it was a little too relevant. Seconds after thinking how, how pretty she looked. Looks. I had to stop being so weird sometimes, or that'll just scare her off more than her finding out that I may, just maybe, possibly have a crush on her. <laughs> oh god, every every stream is gonna be me fucking crushing about how cute these it's too are. Oh, my heart can't take it. Maybe you just need more coffee. Probably. <laughs> her grin gets huge. You need as much coffee as I do sleep. See, we're even. I laugh as I pour myself a short cup, tossing in the pot to get to the dregs. Maybe you're right. She passes back to the front room, most held in the air like she's she's won some great victory. I catch her I catch her peeking back to see if I'm watching, so I make a huge show of rolling my eyes. She sticks her tongue out in return. When I set my cup down in the sink, I'm gonna throws the door open and waits for me to stand there. For having been mostly asleep and in the dark, it looks like I did a okay job parking. By which I mean, there's actually by that, by the by which I mean, we're actually in one of the designated camping spaces. There's more than I can say for a lot of the others here. Hens cover nearly every patch of land that doesn't have an RV on it. Something we can right up against the road of sails, causing a few cars that pass by to have to hug the edge. Just like back in Shiprock, this is a fiasco. Squads of little rampage, squads of little kids rampage around, uh, squirting each other, and everyone else with the water guns, uh, and just being in the way. One little brat runs up to us and holds a squirt gun like he's going to shoot me, but the death glare I guess him gives him set, uh, sent him running back to the, in the other direction. Not a fan of kids? Not the rotten ones. Mina, on the other hand, waves the retreating boy and giggles as a weak burst of water hits her. I don't know how you can stand it. They're just kids. Besides, I'm pretty used to it. Big family, right? Yep. We start to walk in the, in the direction of the canyon itself, possibly sometimes to like cars or tour group passes by. This is such a mess. Wonder how many of them are treasure hunters. Well, it's the Grand Canyon, so a lot of people are probably just regular tourists, right? Yeah, probably. I feel bad for them. And all the other people who just want to enjoy these parks. You really hate people, huh? <laughs> what? Where'd that come from? I don't know. You're just always complaining about there being too many people around. I really complain that much. Thank you, but I guess I do. I don't hate people. I just don't like when it's all chaotic like this. So you don't like crowds then? That's closer, yeah. Kinda weird that you're so hyped for this music thing then, don't you think? Isn't that gonna be the biggest crowd yet? Sure, but that's different. Why? I don't know. Just is. Why? <laughs> what are you, five? No wonder you get along with kids so well. 
We both laugh. But I guess it's just because everyone is there for the same thing. You have something in common with them. Isn't everyone here for the same thing? Yeah, but... I struggle to find an explanation. But she laughs it off and shrugs. I'm just kidding anyway. You can't be the only one who teases. <laughs> you don't like big crowds and that's fine. What about you? I think it's fun. And besides, you get to meet all sorts of cool people. Who knows? Maybe you'll meet a special someone or a long-lost relative or something. That church, wink wink. Special someone, huh? Maybe. Would be pretty unlikely, though. Probably. But it's still fun to think about. And speaking of odds, Amber! Oh god, it's fucking... it's Mariah, isn't it? Marina points out another cluster of mortar homes down the road. I follow her gaze, immediately understanding. Taking up two spaces because of the size and bad parking is a familiar titan of an RV. God, no! Yeah. <laughs> but Marina's already heading towards it. My nemesis, Mariah's motorhome. The door flies open seconds before, Mar before Marina reaches it. Out strolls Joseph, Tess close behind. You call that a break? You've had boyfriends that last longer. <laughs> Sis has never had a boyfriend. My point exactly. <laughs> Jesus Christ, fucking brittle. Quit your moaning. You two just need more work, Ether. You mean ethics, but you've probably never heard the word. Mariah appears in the doorway, uh, leaning on a shovel. Uh, you can see her about to re retard, but then she spots either me or Mariah. Maria, uh, and her face is you play. I'm having a stroke. Maria, Marie, Maria appears in the doorway, then on a shovel. Uh, I can see her about to retard. Then she spots either me or Marina, uh, and her and her gaze, and her and her glare is replaced with a smug grin. Why did they make their names so similar? I'm going to. The fame to ever name these characters and strangle them. Well, well, well. Look who finally caught up. Hey, guys! Oh, uh, hey there, ladies. I sigh and speed up my, uh... Gla glacial? Yeah. I speed up and... S I sigh and speed up my glacial pace. Uh, may as well get this over with. Mariah picks up a crate of tools from, be from beside her and carries them out before shoving the crate into Joseph's hands. And he buckle at the way in, and he sets it on the ground. <laughs> Did you follow our dust all the way here? I wish we'd seen it so we could have stayed away. <laughs> Maybe you should go now and get a head start on the next piece before we find the one here. She pulls out a shovel like a sword and points it at me. Unless you're gonna fight us for this one too. She raises my hat. I raise my hands and surrender. We already had one bust at Canyon Duche. This one's all yours to screw up. The shovel drops a couple inches either at the response or because her arm's getting silly. Canyon to say? But there's only one Grand Canyon. There's more than one canyon in the world, Mayor. Figured it was there at the Mummy Cave ruins, but we didn't find anything. So if you want to search all 2,000 miles of the Grand Canyon, then good luck. Damn it! Maya froze down her hands uh, and the tool bag slips from her, plummeting onto Joseph's foot hard. Uh, the crate in his hands. Uh, the crate in his hand are the next to fall, this time onto the other foot. The box bursts open, flooding the ground with heavy hammers and wrenches. A gasp escapes his mouth, then silence. Are you gonna get drunk and cry yourself to sleep again, sis? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, you're fucking obliterating her. Somehow, with the pain grunts, Joseph manages to speak. The limit is once per week. Maria, Mariah's eyes twitch. In one smooth motion, he whirls around and clumps her companion's head, puffs and crosses her arms. Joseph reacts like any normal human being and rubs his head to soothe his never-ending pain. Tess hardly acknowledges it, bubbling back and forth like a human bubble has. I don't think I've ever get over how creepy that girl is. She, she clunks Joseph again, for good measure. Maria, Marina and I both wince. 
imagine this is how this is how it was for Howard when he first met Linda. At least we get to see the canyon that way. Jesus. So out of nowhere, Tess pops off at my side. Tess has been wanting to go out and see the sights, but Mariah's too busy breaking her back for that. Big sisters are bossy, huh? Tess nods, which prompts Maria uh, to stoop down and hug her athletic tender experience. You're not alone! Marina, Marina looks up at me, eyes big. Can we keep her? She's so cute! <laughs> That's property theft! Sorry, only one stray at a time. <laughs> Aww. Marina releases Tess and reaches out her arms as they float away. Anyway, let's get going. If they're gonna waste all day here, we can at least leave them to it. Raya waves her shovel in Joseph's face. Pick up our crap. We gotta rethink our strategy. Crap? Yes! This crap! She taps the crate uh, that, she forced, that she forced on him just minutes ago. Joseph covers Tess' ears and sub mutters something and can't make out. Wait, I have an idea! Four pairs of eyes turn to look at her. Me and Amber, we're about to go sightseeing. Why don't you guys come with us? Oh, hell yeah. That's a terrible idea. Hey, we agree on something. Matessa's eyes sparkle with determination, nodding as she reaches up to tuck on Mariah's suit. That's one vote, yes! She turns to me, pleading, uh, pleading look in her eyes, hoping to make it two votes, yes. I think that sounds like a good time, too. It'd be a nice break. I forbid it. You've already had a break. Yes. You have too much to focus on. Getting distracted by dusty old rocks is the last thing we need. You always say that, but look at her. He pointed to Tess, her face shining with interest as the words say to When did she last show interest in something? Hell, has she ever shown interest in something? We're still not going. An, an irritable groan rumbles for Joseph's throat. Uh, as he still looks as casual and relaxed as he usually does. Look, we're not always going to do what you want just because you say so. We're going, and if we have to, we'll force you to come along. Rena laughs uh, awkwardly. It's fine, it's fine. You guys don't have to come if you don't want to. But it's too late for that. Rena lets out a single disingenuous ha and marches to Joseph. You're gonna force me to go, huh? That's right. She stares him down, or up, to be accurate. The top of her head only reaches up to his chin. Regardless, she gives him a nasty grin and repeatedly pokes his chest for daring to defy her. This doesn't seem to faze him, though, as his lips curled into, a, into an ominous smile. And how exactly do you plan to do that? Fast and majestic, the canyon dominates the horizon. As far as my eyes can see, uh... Calico rocks are giving a murky tint by the dying sunlight. It's a breathtaking view. I just stare out over the abyss, watching as the sun slowly climbs down the sky. What are you even looking at? She says it flatly. Not a good question. Mariah's been this way for hours now, since Joseph practically dragged her into the RV. While well, the other three uh, have amused themselves with disposable cameras and curiosity, Mariah's tailed me like a, ma like a, ma like a mangy dog. She won't let me forget about her relentless apathy, punctuating it with frequent sighs. I'm looking at the cliffs, and considering sending you to get a closer look at the bottom. This is your fault, you know. What is? That we're here, or at least that I'm here. Hey, I didn't want you along either. That was all Marina. Just tell that airhead no sometime. Guessing you've never turned in a request of hers in your life. <laughs> I mean, no, she's got a point. Am Amber's kind of something. I sure her a dirty look at the word airhead. Mariah rolls her eyes. She doesn't care one bit. She wanted to play with Tess. Someone has to. Joe does it all the time. Uh, Bet the best of point is I actually can't even press it. Besides, you should see the look I get if I try to stop her from something. Maybe I can't say no. Be more like me. Mental fortitude and training. It's almost breaking down when someone threatens to take away the key to your liquor cabinet part of that mental fortitude and training. 
Just this entire fucking game is just writing one uh, verbal snack down after another. She clicks her tongue in annoyance and grumbles. I could have still said no. I was just doing it for Tess. I turn my attention over to the, uh, the impromptu photo shoot again. Both the girls climbed on the rocks and leaned against uh, the railing to take pictures. Joseph trails close behind. I like to make sure nobody slips. Sometimes uh, he, sometimes he's pulled in for a picture. Marina's taken, Marina's taken pictures of just about everything: the sky, the ground, top hidden Mariah. Uh, as a photographer, she's not very picky. Tess, on the other hand, seemed to have a natural knack for it. She took pictures of scenic valleys and a close-up beautiful desert flowers in full bloom. Uh, uh, usually with Joseph as the model. She even managed to get uh, close enough to take one of uh, she even managed to get close enough to take one of an eagle perched on a rock. Not hard when you're practically invisible then. I don't even know why she's so interested in this stuff. What? The wonder and majesty of naturally formed geographic wonders? That's a fancy way of saying overgrown rocks. Who cares? Shouldn't you be glad that she is? I'd prefer if she cared about something that matters. Like getting rich? Exactly. It's Americana this, sightseeing that. What the hell even is Americana? Good question, Tell actually. Texas shirts and old rocking chairs that some hicks farted on? Do you ever listen to yourself talk? Just be happy she's interested in culture and expanding her horizons. Culture? <laughs> Our favorite foods are bastardized versions of foreign cuisine. Culture's a sham. When I was her age, I was interested in things that actually mattered. Like treasure. Bruh. Years later, and nothing's changed. Since the other girls are taking a break, Joseph has joined us. They want to take some pictures with you. Maya stops to pro starts to protest, but Joseph cuts her off. Your sister wanted me to ask. Her mouth shuts and she rolls her eyes again. Fine. She stalks over to where they are, kicking up clothes of dust of each heavy step. Sorry if she's causing you trouble. She can be a bit of a handful. I know it's hard to believe, but there's a good heart in there. Somewhere. She'd probably sell it for a dollar if she could. Joseph laughs heartily. You might be right. That's just how she is, I guess. Been that way since we were kids. It's hard to imagine that someone could not only know Mariah's child, but want to maintain a friendship with her the, uh, for the rest of their lives. Come to think of it, this is a bit of an odd case compared to the other two. Odd just because he's so normal. Hey, can I ask you something? Shoot. Do you care about the treasure? He scratches the stubble on his chin and thinks about it. Like, you have a good head on your shoulders. Why do you let her drag you around? Well, it's not that I don't care about the treasure. Being rich doesn't sound like a bad gig at all. But I wouldn't say I have a good head on my shoulders either. If it came down to treasure hunting or kicking back on a couch all day, I'd pick the couch. Figures. Everyone broad smell returned. I didn't even notice it disappeared. But as for them, one of them needs someone to look out for her, and the other is ten. <laughs> now we both laugh. She's the one who gets me off the couch. I'm the one who gets her to sit down sometimes. Even back in school, she was always picking fights. Didn't matter if it was another kid or a teacher. Got her ass kicked a couple times. If she were all on her own, she'd tear apart the whole Southwest. That makes sense? I look over where the three of them are still taking pictures. Tess is standing on a rock so that she's on the same level as the others. Right now, two of her fingers hold Mariah's mouth in the shape of a smile. I'm right. <laughs> Uh, on Mariah's other side, Marina holds the camera out and just uh, and takes their picture. Then Tess takes one. Though Mariah, though Maria keeps her hand out of Mariah. Then Tess. Why does he make their names so similar? I'm gonna scream. Uh, when Tess, then Tess takes one. Though Maria, the Marina, uh, keeps her hand out of Maria's mouth. Yeah, I know what you mean. Well, someone's gotta make sure Tess doesn't starve. Catching up, catching us watching. Marina waves vigorously. She nearly knocks Mariah's lights out when she does. I wave back. Tess says something that gets Mariah that gets Marina's attention. 
and after a second, Romina hurries over. I winces as I watch her clumsily uh, climb over the rocks, scared that she's going to slip and hurt herself. But she arrives unharmed. Tess wanted me to ask if you'd go be in the pictures too, Joe. She says she wants all three of you. Looks like that's my cue. With nothing more to say, she drifts over to the others uh, and exchanges spots with Marina. Tess, puts, uh, Tess passes him the camera uh, and he holds it up to his eye. Why are you using this cheap thing anyway? The camera on Mariah's phone is way better. He takes the camera from Tess and dangles it uh, from his fingers, observing it like an ancient, long buried artifact. The memory is full from all her journal entries. Journal? It's more like gangsty poetry. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Mariah turns towards me, panic and fury in her eyes, but she's too slow. How did that one go again? Oh yeah. Rivers of amber pour from my butter like tears, forever sweeping El Dorado beyond my grass. <laughs> Mariah slouches. I hate you both. Aw, oh, but we love you, Mariah. Tess clings to her sister's weight like a mag- her waist like a magnet, showing her affection. It goes up, it goes, it goes ignored. Now squeeze in, I'm not sure how we're all gonna fit. Watch her bottom before I tap Maria, uh, I tap Marina on the shoulder. I should keep them busy for a while. Quick, while they're distracted! Uh, what? I grab Marina's hand and dash off, dragging her behind me. I see you're having trouble keeping up, but I don't slow down. I don't look Just dashed. keep running! Amber, where are we going? I'm totally gonna go make it or something. We wander around for a while uh, until we find another viewpoint that's empty from other people. I'm guessing there's a lot of treasure hunters. Uh, I'm guessing that a lot of treasure hunters are out looking now, since the oppressive heat isn't that bad. I lean against the rail. My head popped up in my my head propped up in my arms. The cool metal feels nice against my skin. Marina does the same. She sighs wistfully. So pretty. Which part? All of it, especially the sunset. Nearly all the sunlight has been swallowed by the canyon's colossal darkness. Shadows cast by the stone mute the gorgeous colors of, as the sun melts into the tip of the canyon. It's barred and desolate, but Marina's right. It's pretty. Oh, let's take a picture before it gets too dark. Uh. Do it. You're not getting out of this one. You haven't been in any of the pictures today. Yeah, that's on purpose. Scooch in. Like, together? Duh. She slides towards me and I squirm away on instinct. What's wrong? Immediately before I can answer, she grins slyly. Wait a second. You're camera shy, aren't you? I'm not. I retort a little too quickly. Oh? Clearly she doesn't believe me. It's not that I'm afraid of them or anything. I just don't like having my picture taken. How come? I shrug. Just don't. Well, you'll have to deal with it this time. She zips over and before I can react, she presses her cheek to mine. Shutter clicks and momentarily stunned by the flash. Before I can protest or enjoy the closeness, she's already pulled away and is checking the results. It's cute, look! She shoves the camera into my face, but it's so close, the screen is so uh, she shoves the camera into my face, but it's so close and the screen is so small that I can't actually see the picture. I just nod. I can't wait to get these developed. Current to me, Marina pauses. How do you get photos developed anyway? We'll have to take them to the store and have them do it. Most big supermarkets can. Okay, first thing tomorrow then. Sure. Like a hummingbird, Marina darts forward and gives me a tight hug. Thanks for coming out here. It's been so amazing. I hope it was worth it. I look down at her and press. I look down at her and press against me. Yeah, it was. Marina pulls away to my great disappointment. She opens her mouth like she's going to say something, but then seems to change her mind. What? 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 You were about to say something? What was it? Oh, uh. Never mind. Hey, you can't do that. Now I really want to know. She giggles, but it's a distracted set. But it's distracted sending. Okay, fine. I was just gonna ask, 
Why is it that you hate Mariah and her group so much? Where'd that come from? Mary turns away and steers out over the canyon again. It's getting pretty dark. She's quiet for a moment before she talks. I don't know. You just complain about them a lot. I don't hate them, dummy. Joe and Tess are fine. It's just Mariah that I have a problem with. <laughs> Mariah. How come? She's a bitch. Loud and rude and obnoxious. Ugh, I really hate people like that. She thinks she is always right, too. Sounds like someone else I know. <laughs> <sighs> Don't give me that. We're nothing alike. Marina laughs. Yeah, yeah. Half a minute passes in silence. You're way cuter than she is. <gasps> Tame stops, and so does my heart. Everything feels like it's frozen. I look over at Marina. Uh, but she's looking at the canyon, not me. Just a couple inches away. I gulp, swallowing the lumps forming in my throat. You said that before, I think. You're cuter. Oh, hush. I'm trying to compliment you. <laughs> I'll fall silent for a moment. I'm not sure how to respond. You know, back when we first met, I meant what I said about you being cute, too. <laughs> she giggles again. I'd forgotten about that. And if on cue, a light breeze uh, starts up, causing your hair to bellow out like a cloud, her side, tail's hastily, her side tail hastily bound, uh, looks as if it might come undone. Finally, she turns to me, her eyes wide and lips close on her. My palms are dry and my knees tremble. Golfing yet again, I cross a short distance between us in a half step, leaning in and... There you are! God damn it, Maria! Maria, someone's about to die. Yeah, you, you interrupted this. If I could strangle her, I would. Maria's shrill voice cuts through the moment, rupturing my eardrums and patience. I pull, I pull away, and Marina has already turned around to face them. The trio appears like, a spec like spectators out of the dark. You left us behind! We tried to, at least. You were the ones who dragged us out here. I at least expect you to stick around. Paired into submission, Marina's shoulders fall. Back off. I wanted to go see the sunset without you sighing about it. <laughs> Whatever. It was a waste of time either way. Come on, we're going back. Mariah lopes off down the path uh, at a brisk pace. Marina and Tess are, are back to photographing anything and everything. The low light means that the pictures won't show up. Joseph and I trail behind at the end of the party. How was the sunset? Sighing, I pull ahead. Right now, even Joseph seems to be a little too much. It was okay. I can't say it was cleared up. Was can't say it's cleared up a lot since we set out this morning. It's it, it's still pretty full. But at least it's not claustrophobic anymore. A few campfires illuminate people that are left behind, plus the smoke keeps the bugs away. While five of us huddle around, huddle outside my RV, the goodbyes are taking a while since Maria, since Maria has to hug everyone at least twice. And then she says something to reignite the conversation, the whole process starts again. Finally, I grab the door handle, signal we're done. Marina automatically begins the final round of hugs. So, what's next for you guys? Maybe not. Back to poring over the journal to see what we can find. Once we locate it, it's straight off to wherever. Joseph heaves a heavy sigh. No rest for the weary. You don't get weary, Slacker. You get motivated. Oh, you should put that on his shirt. Would you buy one? Nobody would. Then no. <laughs> All of us, even Maria, laugh well. Finally, Joseph puts his arm around Tess and starts leading them away. We'll get out of here for the night. Sorry, down the path, they walk towards their motorhome. Wait a sec. They freeze. Maria looks at me, too, curious. Next piece is almost definitely at Arches, in Utah. I hear Mariah- I hear Marina gasp, though I don't see it. Joseph and Tess look at Maria, their profile is barely visible from a flickering campfire in the distance. Maria nods stiffly. Thanks. Probably the first time, probably the first time she said ever said that word. 
with a wave in her hand, a wave of her hand, she turns and they finally leave. Mina and I both watch until they vanish out of sight, and then Maria squeals. I'm so proud of you, Amber! And shocked! That was super nice of you! It wasn't much. This one's pretty easy to figure out when you take the time. I probably save them half an hour at best. Still, it's the thought that counts. Look at all character development. Why'd you do it, though? Someone's gotta take care of them after all. I look away, pretending to scratch an itch on my neck. They're not that bad. We ended up spending the night in the department store parking lot. There were plenty of rest stops, but those are off but those are off the table permanently. Like usual, I woke up pretty early and got on the road again. Even after waking up briefly, Maria passed out uh, until we were already in Moab. Moab's the, qu the quintessential outdoorsy town. It's well alongside the Colorado, Colorado River, winding through a canyon. Every other store sells rafting supplies or hiking gear or camping equipment. Even some of the houses are made to look like log cabins and other rustic architecture. You can see tall, forested mountains from any part of town, but it's not entirely out of the desert either. It's a time of the morning where most people uh, are on their way to work. There's a disgustingly large amount of traffic. It's obvious why shovels, pickaxes stick out of truck beds uh, and cracked windows like uh, porcupine quills. At a glance, I say three quarters of the people con uh, contributing to our glacial, pla ta glacial place are prospectors, which means I don't have any room to complain. After watching the next light change three times, uh, but still not reaching it myself, I sighed and pulled into a nearby diner. At first, I was just planning to grab something, sorry, from, grab some coffee and a bagel and something uh, for when Marina wakes up. With her trademark perfect timing, I hear her claim out of bed. Uh, right as I turn off the RV. We there? Is this Arches? She stumbles up to the front, uh, still look, still looking mostly asleep. I don't know how she can still be tired. She must have gone ten hours. Close. We're in Moab. Arches is still a few miles up the road. Oh, why'd we stop? Because I'm hungry, and traffic's practically stalled. It could be lunchtime before we get there. You were just gonna eat without me? Even though her grogginess, even through her con or, even through her grogginess, she seems shocked and offended. I was gonna grab you something to go, but I will eat without you if you don't get ready fast. Meanie. Yeah, yeah. Complain about me once you're dressed. I can see the star of a smile as she turns back to get ready. Inspecting, I inspect my nails while I wear. A few minutes later, she hops up in front of like the Easter Bunny, Chipper Zena. It's like your energy is stored in your outfit or something. You get dressed and wake right up. We're gonna put on air, put on airs. I don't know what you mean. I'm always cheerful and alert. Uh huh. Did you know that you snore? Her pretense is dropped in a flash. Do not. You do. I love the way out of the RV. Loud, like an elephant seal. <laughs> you know. Marina blusters out uh, for blusters out. The Marina blusters about for a tart while I just wait by the door laughing. She makes a <laughs> noise as she passes me, uh, crossing the parking lot. Still, she holds the door open for me as we go into the diner. Speaking of diner, I'm going to go heat up some pasta. Uh, and I will be right back with the pasta, and I'll continue from there.
I'm finally back. I've got pasta. I'll try to do it as quietly as possible. It's really good. <clears throat> There's a seat yourself sign at the near the front, along with a stack of menus. I grabbed two off the top. Do you need a kid's menu? With the crayons? I'm just teasing her more, but her face lights up. Oh, they have those? Yeah, give me one. Mentally face palming. Uh, I also take a color and sheet and couple of crayons. Find the booth by the window, in the middle of the restaurant, between a family of four and a couple our age. I may, be the, I may be the only empty spot in the whole place. Finally, I look over the breakfast specials. Rina eagerly begins to color. She's got a she's got a dark green, two shades of red and a blue with a yellow and a yellow crayon. Of course, they're worn down to be pra to worn, of course they're worn down uh, to being practically round on the bottoms, which makes it hard for her to stay inside the lanes. When I shift my legs, I accidentally bump the table with my foot and cause her to make a large green streak across the personified egg she was coloring. Oops, sorry. It's okay. What is it they say? There are no mistakes in art, just happy accidents? Something like that. Why green? Do you not see what I'm coloring here? Sam, I amber. I grow and out loud at her off the joke. I'm saved them up for more of them. I'm the arrival of the same witch who beat us. A white uniform is stained with jelly and ketchup. And who knows what else? Can I get you girls something to drink? I'll have some chocolate milk, please. Her already questionable maturity suffers another blow. The crayons in her hands, I'm not sure I can uh, stand to take it any more heads. And for you? Just coffee. No cream or sugar. You got it. Once, I, once she walks away, I nudge Marina with my foot. Chocolate milk? Seriously? Are you eight? Making my voice, Marina shakes her shoulders. Black coffee? Seriously? Are you 40? <laughs> <laughs> hey now, I like the taste of coffee itself. And I like the taste of milk itself. Just with chocolate. You're a dork. But you love me. <laughs> she claims she turns back in a sing song voice. I know what she means, but it still causes a small lump uh, to form in my throat. I swallow, trying to pretend she didn't she didn't hit a little too close to home. I watch her while she goes back to her col to coloring human like hybrids. Her lips are pressing concentration. And there's a little glim a little gleam of white. As she bites off the edge of one. She seems really focused. Surprisingly, she manages to stay inside the lanes of the picture. Rather than trying to use the dull tips, she switches to the flat, round edges. So she, she switches to the flat, round ends, using the edge uh, for more precision. It's kinda working? Without looking up, she starts to chat again. So, where do we start looking today, Captain? Oh, you finally acknowledge me as captain then, huh? I figured you deserve a turn. Just this once. Thanks. I'll try not to let you down. Anyway, I have no idea. You said you think it's by one of the arches, right? Well, yeah, but that doesn't really narrow it down. Pausing your coloring, she looks up at me. It doesn't? Nah. Have you ever seen any pictures of the park? A couple, I guess. I don't know much about it. Well, they named the park after the arch. A couple, I guess. I don't know much about it, though. Well, they named the park after the arches since there were so many of them. Probably hundreds. Seriously? Yeah, some are more famous than others. Let's see. There's Winstone Arch and Double Arch. Those are some of the more famous ones. You've probably seen pictures of those, even if you don't know it. But there are a ton of lesser known ones too. And for all we know, the treasure could be at one of them that doesn't even have a name. So we're screwed. Probably. But that doesn't mean we're giving up. 
Farina nods in satisfaction. Either at my words, the silence of a slice of blue hair she just finished coloring. I don't want to lose twice in a row, so I figure we'll go and look around and see if there are any clues. Maybe watch what other people are doing and thinking. Marina looks and Marina nods along, but she has zoned out. She has a zoned out look, and it tells me she's not really listening. Rather, she seems to be staring past me. I turn, trying to figure out what might be catching her attention. There's nothing except for other groups eating. I made awkward eye contact with the old lady right behind us, uh, and quickly face forward. Hello, inspecting the walls. My word seems to break the spell. Huh? huh? You totally spaced out there. Oops, yeah, sorry, I just started thinking. Before I can ask her about what our waitress returns, our drinks are balanced in a tray along with a few other guests. Marina's chocolate milk comes in, uh, an enormous tin cup that's the size of my forearm, and an entire pot of coffee for me. She sits them down on the table between us. You girls ready to order? Whoops, I haven't looked for the menu once. I flipped through real quick, selling on a standard meal. You good? Marina nods. I'll have the gentleman's breakfast with bacon, eggs over medium, and sourdough toast. And for you? Um, I'll have the chocolate chip pancake platter with scrambled eggs. You want the kids meal or the regular? I choke up my drink as I laugh and feel Marina's foot crash against my leg. Whimpering, whimpering at that and the dribble of my coffee at my chin. I massage my shin underneath the table. Marina float, frowns at me. And the waitress gives me a strange look. And the typical angelic expression returns to me as, play, uh, as Marina places her order. The regular, please and thanks. We'll have that out for you pretty soon. Once again, uh, as she heads back to the kitchen, she goes flying against the tile floor. When she's out of sight, Marina begins a fury of kicks to my shin. At least ones aren't as hard enough to hurt. No, these ones aren't hard enough to hurt. Scurrying backwards in my seat, I draw my leg closer rude, to me. Rude, rude, rude. Come on, you were asking for it with the food and the milk. The waitress asking that was just the icing on the cake. The it's not my fault, you sophisticated adults. Don't appreciate chocolate like I do. You have a bigger sweet tooth than anyone I've ever met. Seriously, how many cavities have you had? None. I brush my teeth twice a day, every day. The last time I went to the dentist, he said my teeth were so shiny, he could see his reflection in them. And when was that? She thinks about it for a minute. Maybe three years? That doesn't count anymore then. When was the last time you had chocolate milk? No, I have to think about that. I don't drink a whole lot of milk to begin with, and as for chocolate... Um, maybe when I was a little kid? I don't know. Amber, Amber, you poor, poor thing. <laughs> she slides her giant cup towards me, so I'm sloshing over the sides in her ace. Try it. Dredges of rough milk surround the rim of the cup from where from I was slipping. God. Dredges of milk surround the rim from the cup. So surround the rim of the cup from Marina's sipping. Across from me, she waits, looking eager. I'm surprised she's not bouncing like normal. After sighing exaggeratedly, I pick up the cup uh, and down a large gulp, trying not to think. Uh, trying not to think silly, cliche thoughts about indirect kiss. To my surprise, the drink is really good. It's got a deeper, richer flavor than the stuff you get in jocks at the store. I can tell they made it themselves in the kitchen. It's not overwhelmingly sweet. In fact, it's perfect. Damn, I don't know if I'm. I don't know if I'm disappointed or not, giving her the satisfaction of being right. My pride aches. As I push the cup back towards Marina, uh, she receives it with a sly smirk. So. She draws those words already knowing my answer. It wasn't bad. That's all I'm willing to concede. She laughs and takes another huge sip. I just set the cup down, she has a thick milk mustache on her upper lip. I watch her inappropriate, uh, 
fascination. Yeah. Uh, an appropriate fascination is her tongue comes out and cleans that way. And it grabs the sheet she was coloring and it pushes it over to me as well. Wanna color something? While you're acting like a kid and all. I roll my eyes but snatch away the crayon as she offers. Most of the picture, all of them. Most of the pictures, all of them breakfast foods with faces and dated outfits that have already been colored in. There's a stylish looking piece of bread with a dress and a wig that's still, that's still blank though. I color the dress with a green crayon as lightly as I can and use a lighter shade of red for the hair. <laughs> when I'm done, I show the page to, Mar to Marina. It's you! She leans huh? in. The colors. Look, your toast. She collapses backwards as if my pun physically wounds her. She shakes her head and looks down while I crack up. That was even worse than Sam I Amber. Uh-huh. You better step up your game some. Please, stop. <laughs> I don't plan to. The only thing that saves her is the arrival of the waitress right then. That's pretty fast service considering how busy the place is. Came in style for oversized beverages. The portions are enormous. The plate that Marina's pancakes are served on is so large that it looks like it could have used as a shield back in medieval times. And the pancakes form a tower that's probably half a foot tall. My own meal arrives in a suburbly giant plate. Uh, we have to scramble and move our drinks around just to make room. It's hardly the empty space. Can I get you girls anything else? Marina shakes her head and I look down at the table as I mumble. Can I get a glass of chocolate milk, please? Yes. As the witches departs again, I glance over, fear for the inevitable teasing. But instead, Marina just stares at her food dumbstruck. Maybe I should have gotten the kid size. I finished about half my meal before the, di the dismay set in. There's no way I could possibly finish this. Most people I know can eat as much food in one sitting. Every bite is a struggle. Marina's fearing, Marina's fearing similarly. Her plate of eggs is noticeably untouched just because there's so much pancake to work for. I can tell that pancake fatigue, uh, that feeling where you, ha where you get halfway through them and then you realize you're sick of pancakes, has long set in for her. She cuts off a bite, looks at it for a while, and sets her fork down. I think I'm done. Yeah, you and me both. The largest plate I have, largest plate I have, consists of a mess of potatoes, cheese, and bacon. With the eggs laid over it. And then, of course, there was a fruit, the toast, fruit, and sausage, uh, which each got their own smaller plate. I have ordered from the kids' menu too. I'd have ordered from the kids' menu too if I'd known this is how it would be. I don't think I'll ever want pancakes again. For once, I don't have any snarky remarks. I don't want to be sick from after what she just went through. We'll get some boxes to go. At least we'll have food for a week now if we ever get stranded. After our wait just brings us our bell and styrofoam containers, we head back to the RV. It looks like traffic hasn't gotten that much better in the 45 minutes we've been out here. Uh, the cars are still pressed bumper to bumper. The sidewalks are so full with swarming pedestrians, making better time than the traffic. I wonder if it's always this busy or if people just decided not to drive. Once we're ready to go, I take us over to the edge of the parking lot. I expect that the constant stream of cars makes it impossible for us to get out. I wait, I watch impatiently uh, for an opening of the traffic, but can't see one for miles. Oh, come on! I press my forehead to the steering wheel. We've been sitting here for minutes now. Is there another exit we could use? Onto a different street? I look up and check the mirrors. I don't see anything. The edge of the dinner's property is surrounded by a cream colored sense. Up against the side, but quickly turns into a sound of surprise. Amber, look! She points past my face and out the window. An old lady in a little hatchback sedan has stopped to let us out. The two of us wave at her as she finally uh, lumbers onto the store itself. Hey! I'm glad somebody was nice at least. Yeah, still a long way to go though. The long lane of cars extends as far as I can see, for it finally goes out of sight and around a bend on the roof. So much busier here than the other places we've been. 
Arches is one of the most popular national parks. Like, when you think of parks in the U.S., you think of Arches and the Grand Canyon and Yosemite, and that kind of thing. Oh crap, I dropped my pasta. I don't know if it's a disaster. So I think a lot of people will be at those big spots. I think it'll be like Shiprock again? What, with the megaphone in law enforcement? Mm-hmm. Maybe. Probably not. These parks are a lot bigger and more spread out. Way harder to have people watching. The only option would to be straight up close. And then you have horrible people who sneak in and out of bounds anyway. Yeah, exactly. Who would ever do that? Nobody we know, that's for sure. It's okay. Once we're filthy rich, we can make a donation to the canyon or something. Let's just buy the canyon and pay to have everything reconstructed. Perfect. <laughs> Takes a while, but we finally make it past all the spotlight, all the stoplights. After that, it's still slow going, uh, but at least it's steady. Maybe 15 minutes past crawling through town before things start pick before things start to pick up. Still a couple miles away. We finally see the exit of the park itself. Some people continue past, uh, staying on the highway. Most are in line for arches. At least there's a whole, uh, at least there's a whole lane for people like us. This traffic is congested, it's like my nose in winter, but the end is in sight. May as well get comfy. We're gonna be here a while. Taking my advice, Marina lays back and pops her feet up on the dash. Her dress bunches up as her, uh, by her knees, leaving most of her leg exposed. I stick a few guilty glances in the corner of my eye. I don't know any better. I think that all the skin, uh, I think that all the skin she, show, she shows was intentional. But it's Maria. That means she's not even conscious about that stuff. Or <laughs> whatever. I front god damn it. Or me, for that matter. I wonder if she knows that I'm into her. To distract myself, I grabbed the box of, a box of tapes. I kept the music off earlier so that Marina uh, could sleep. Wanna pick this time? Sure. Filling it, setting, setting it in her lap, she begins to run through the bin. I'm pretty sure that she knows all the music I have by now. We've listened to every tape at least once, and I have, a, and I have an okay feel that she, uh, of what she, for what she likes and what she doesn't. Sometimes she taps her fingers to the beat or hums along when uh, she likes what we're listening to. If she doesn't, she flat out ignores it. The one she sells on is an album, instrumental folk songs, very stereotypical western sound now. It's a little high energy for us sitting in traffic, but that's alright. It's better than nothing. We just listen to the music, uh, which, which we've cranked up loud while we wait. The album's nearly half over by the time we finally make it through the park gates. Beyond them, traffic mercilessly, uh, mercilessly uh, lets, lets up some. Not because there are fewer cars, there are just more cars and there are rocks to be seen. Uh, but, a lot of them, but a lot of those are pulled off on a shoulder or cramped into parking slots. Nearly every inch of pavement doesn't have a car on it, as a person instead. Also, there are different trails and forks in the road, uh, so not everyone uh, is going in the same direction now. Being able to drive without, being able to, without having to tap the brakes every couple seconds is a relief. A pickup truck towing a trailer, a pickup truck towing a trailer pulls off the shoulder ahead uh, and back up and back onto the road, so I take his spot. Putting it in park, I take a swing, I take a swig of stone cold coffee. Wanna grab the pamphlets? We snag a couple brochures back at the diner. Uh, they don't have a whole lot of info, but they're start, but they're start, but they're starting points. Okay, I take a break. From, I need to take a break from reading, from reading for a second. I am having a brain aneurysm. Oh, my pass is getting cold. I apologize. If you can hear it. Bye. I'll be by Mick for a second and then I'll finish my pasta.
Pass has been finished. I've already been streaming for like two and a half hours. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll keep going to the end of this chapter. And then I'll, I'll call it a day. <clears throat> we had a couple of brochures back at the diner. They don't have a whole lot of info, but they're a starting point. We need to retrieve them uh, and spread them out on the table like puzzle pieces. Alongside them as a journal. It's Spain has lost all its strength and the pages just flop around. So, the journal says that it's buried between two things. Right, but something out of the way. Painting out the windshield to the expanses beyond. The lot that could be considered out of the way. It'd have to be something memorable. Or else he'd come back and have no idea where to go. And anything memorable is probably going to be something popular, right? Exactly, yeah. She flips through some of the pamphlets. They all have the same information on the same landmarks, just with slightly different pictures. Wait. She was about to toss one of them, but it catches my eye. Hand me that. I'm gonna pass over the brochure. I turn to one of, his, of the inner pages. There's only one picture, and a, long, and a longer paragraph of text. I read aloud. One of the most famous landmarks in all of the park, Double Arch is a fan favorite. Recognizable for its two elegant curves, Double Arch can be accessed via a short hike and is open to exploration. <laughs> Hold up the flowers so you can see the picture. That is two arches of stone connected uh, at one, but otherwise perpendicular from each other. Okay, connected at one side, but otherwise perpendicular to each other. She snatches out of my hand for a closer look, nearly cutting my fingers. Oh my god, you think it's between the two of these? That makes sense, right? You definitely remember how it looks. And it's kind of out of the way. The paper whizzes past my face as Marina hurls them backwards and she points forward. Two, two, full steam ahead! I throw the RV back in the drive and pull it onto the road again. There are saints everywhere for double arch, so we don't need the maps that we got that we got at the gate. We've had scenes for other landmarks too. So pretty weird names. This is a parade of elephants for one thing, uh, which is in the same direction as Ham Rock. There's even a phallic sounding rock, rock simply named the Organ. All of those are down eggs. All of those are down eggs we don't take. Instead, we soon uh, end up in the back of yet another awful coffee jam. We're gonna stare through the windows to creep along. Uh, where we are right now is nearly indistinguishable from the highways we've spent so much time on. There are a few actual arches around, but none, but none distinct enough to get any real attention. Inch by inch, we advance down the road until we finally come to the parking lot of Double Arch. The only problem is, it's totally full. Not just busy, but packed. Every par parking spot is taken, with a few cars jammed into empty spaces that are clearly not meant for that. Like lights, people are swarming up and down the arch itself, visible uh, even from the road. At least this time it isn't off limits. Looks like everyone else had the same idea. Don't sound so glum. We can still go take a look. If we can ever find somewhere to park. Yeah, that is a pretty big if. The entire caravan uh, passes by the parking lot. There are a dozen cars behind me too. Maybe a half mile up the road, we come across another lot. Up for a bit of walking? Yeah! Quickly take one of the remaining spaces. There are a few openings here. There are a few openings here. Looks like most people uh, aren't as willing to walk as Mariah, and as Marina and I. Some of the cars behind us pull into. We opt to leave the metal detector and other equipment in the RV for now. If we see anything that looks promising, we can come back and grab it. Uh, we walk back up to Double Arch. To Double Arch does the, the walk back up to Double Arch doesn't take long, and it's nice to be outdoors again. We have to stick to the very edge of the road to avoid the stream of cars flowing towards us. Seems there are more than a dozen uh, behind us after all. As a short height, there's, there's a short height from the Double Arch parking lot. Uh, to the arch itself. It's an easy move and we don't even break the sweat. Up close it's obvious there aren't many people here just to see the sights. Most everyone's carrying a shovel or other tool. There's a pair of park rangers watching, but they don't seem to be intervening at all. They just slouch against a wooden fence looking defeated. Can you imagine how big of celebrities we'd be if anyone here knew we found the shiprock treasure? 
I went for it as quietly as I can to Marina. Right? I was thinking about that earlier. I kind of wanted to show off, but that's probably not a good idea. Like anyone would believe us anyway. But you don't want to have your face all over the New York Times as one of the girls who found the treasure? Hmm. <laughs> Being in the local newspaper is on my bucket list. Dream big, Marina. My friends from school would totally have a heart attack when they found out. But don't they always say to keep it a secret if you win the lottery? Yeah. Otherwise, people will never leave you alone. You'll get all sorts of messages from people you used to know or long-lost relatives. Uh, I have enough not lost relatives to deal with. <laughs> Plus, I don't want to get kidnapped and held for ransom or something like that. What about you? No way. I'm just going to quietly retreat into one of my three mansions when all this is over. <laughs> Big brain. Oh, you're only going to buy three? Yeah, gotta save the rest for my 14 new motorhomes after all. She giggles. Do I get to drive one of them? Why not? But you could buy your own, you know. No way! I'll just come bother you if I need one. We've got as close as the arches. We've got as close to the arches as we can. The mobs are sweaty people. It's, it's too thick for us to push our way through. There are dozens of people sweeping over the dust grain, metal detectors. Having, hanging back around the edge, wearing a smell fades away quickly. Um... Yeah, this is a bit of a mess. People jostle and twist each other out of the way. It's hard to believe anyone is actually, prospect, is actually prospecting uh, as much as they are just trying not to lose their spot. Maybe we should come back later? I don't know if there, if there will be... I don't know if it'll be any better later, but maybe. Yes. Though if the treasure is here, I feel like someone would have found it by now. Just like back in the canyon to Chile. You know, this must have been going on for a few days now. Yeah. All the enthusiasm she had just a minute ago, uh, we were joking, uh, has evaporated in the desert sun. Uh, it rocks. It, it, a rock skips past my foot uh, as she kicks the dirt. <laughs> I poke her and she yells in surprise. Hey now, I'm not saying we give up. I'm just saying we regroup and strategize. We can go see the rest of the park in the meantime. Didn't you say you've wanted to see this place for a while? Yeah, I guess. It's obvious, she, it's obvious that she's still bummed, uh, but there's nothing I can do about that. Once we're back in the motorhome, we leave the busy main road ASAP. Uh, and spend a while seeing sights for our air-conditioned comfort. Marina's move, mood improved steadily throughout the day, uh, contracted only by our growing hunger. As we pull back into Moab, uh, we're both ravenous. Wanna just heat up our leftovers? Hmm... Guessing that's a no. I'm not ready for pancakes again yet. I need a day, or maybe a week. Let me know if you see somewhere you want me to stop. Now that it's approaching evening, there aren't uh, any more ma massive traffic jams going through Moab. Uh, we can cruise through at a steady pace, just like when we were first uh, going, just like when we first got into arches. Until I slam on the brakes. You're kidding me. Maria has been slouching the bolts upright at, at the sudden stop. What happened? Just a few feet ahead, in the parking lot of the diner we ate this morning, is Maria's motorhome. Look at that. It's them. You say that like, she says that like she didn't give them this location. Girl, what were you expecting? I point, and Maria leans forward when she recognizes her RV. She grabs. Should we go see them? What? No way! That's extra reason to avoid that place. Ah, uh, but Amber, maybe we could see about teaming up for the treasure here or something. That'd never happen. Mariah would rather lose every time than have our help. Besides, it's not like... Please? Already giving up in my head. Give Maria uh, one last desperate look. Seriously? Yeah, even if we don't team up, it'd be nice to see them again. Not sure if nice is the word I'd use. Despite my muttering, I flick all my blinkers and change lane, pulling into the parking lot yet again. Late this morning, it seems pretty busy. I have to park next to Mariah's RV because it's the only open spot large enough. 
Marina slipped out and stop and uh, skips out and towards the entrance while I touch behind her. It doesn't take long to find the trio, even amongst all the eccentric people that uh, even I haven't played Dimension in far too long, my brain's fucking jelly. Even amongst all the eccentric people that the hunt has drawn, the questionable fashion sense stands out. They have a large table near the back, but the one Mar Marina and I ate out this morning. Joseph and Trey share a no, Joseph and Tess share a bench while Maria spreads across the opposite side. It's probably supposed to look sultry, but it comes across like the bench is devouring her. When she sees them, Marina scurries to the back, hands raised, hands raised in greeting. I bring up, I bring up the rear, still slow. Hey guys! Tess and Joseph uh, both wave, uh, and the latter smiling uh, when he sees us. Marina looks surprised. Maria looks surprised for a second, and skills and turns towards the hall. The feeling is mutual. Hey, imagine running into you two here. Nope, we've been here all day. We actually ate breakfast at this place this morning. Yeah, you're always a couple steps behind us, I guess. Yeah, this, Mariah's glare is stonier than Double Arch itself, but of course, she keeps looking at the wall instead of us. Joseph laughs though. Here, let's break bread. He and Tess scooch down the booth, making some room for Marina. From making some room which Marina Park hotels. Okay, but my brain is fucking jelly. I'm. I think I'll call it. A, I think I'll call it quits here. Uh, it, no idea if I'll be able to stream tomorrow. Uh, Friday definitely. Uh, and Sundays, uh, it's gonna be a marathon stream uh, for, to celebrate my birthday. Uh, so you know, I'll probably be able to blaze for that. Blaze for the rest of it if I haven't finished it already. Ugh, big stretch. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for showing up, Lucy did. And I'll uh, see you Friday, possibly tomorrow. Bye. Can I get my ending stream, please? Thank you.